There are few players that have as mythical a status as Robin Friday. The former Reading and Cardiff forward has a seemingly endless array of stories told about him, and whilst none of his greatest moments can be found on film, his legend has and will continue to be passed through the generations. This is the story of the life of Robin Friday. Robin Friday was born on the 27th of July 1952 in Acton, London. Robin formed a close bond with his twin brother Tony, and his father Alf, a former Brentford player, took his sons to their first football match when they were two at Griffin Park. Alf would play football in the park with his boys every afternoon. Robin Friday showed excellent footballing prowess, possessing the ability to kick an orange up to his neck, let it roll down and catch it with his foot. Friday showed little interest in school, often skiving off to hang out with girls in the park. His clear talent was gaining notice, and he spent time in the youth academies of Crystal Palace, QPR and Chelsea, but the clubs all ran out of patience with him. Friday continued playing football, but also started doing drugs around the age of 15. He started training as a plasterer, but it was clear to all that he didn't really care. He was often found stealing, and ended up in a boar stall for 14 months. His time behind bars allowed him to work on his fitness, and having played for the boar stall team, he was able to play and train with the Reading youth side. After being released from custody, Friday started a relationship with Maxine Dugan. Maxine was mixed race, and the interracial relationship saw many of Friday's peers reject him. When they married at 17, Friday's father refused to attend the wedding. They would have a daughter, but this didn't stop Friday from continuing to go out drinking and womanising. Friday would sign for Walthamstow, and also worked as an asphalter alongside many of his new teammates. After impressing at Walthamstow, he would sign for Hayes, but nearly lost his life in a freak accident. Whilst working on a roof in Lambeth, Friday fell onto a spike, which pierced through his stomach and narrowly missed one of his lungs. Astonishingly, Friday pulled himself off the spike and returned to action with Hayes only three months later. During one match with Hayes, they had to start with ten men as Friday had not turned up. The forward eventually arrived, clearly intoxicated, and after being sent on, scored the winning goal. He would have a spell at Enfield before returning to Hayes, and having impressed for the latter side in an FA Cup tie against Reading, Royals manager Charlie Hurley opted to sign Friday. Robin Friday would sign for Reading in January 1974, having scored 46 goals in 67 appearances for Hayes. He would initially be at Reading on part-time terms, continuing as an asphalter, and often had to be taken out of training as his determination to win saw him commonly injuring teammates. After Reading was stuck in a poor run of form, Friday was brought into the team. He impressed in his first few performances, with the Reading Evening Post saying his showing in a 3-3 draw against Northampton was outstanding. He soon signed professional terms with the Royals. He quickly became a fan favourite with the Reading faithful, with a solo goal against Exeter described as glorious. No matter how badly the opposition hurt him, he would always get up, despite never wearing shin pads. Friday helped Reading up to 6th place in the 4th division, but his off-pitch life remained wild. He continued binge drinking, and on one night out, turned up at a club wearing an overcoat and boots. Friday then entered the dance floor to reveal he was wearing nothing underneath, and started dancing in just his boots. He was banned from venues across Reading, and often received complaints from neighbours about playing heavy metal music in the early hours. Despite spending the summer of 1974 in a hippie commune, Friday was still Reading's best player the next season, and attracted attention from Arsenal manager Bertie Mee. Friday's bizarre behaviour continued, with him attempting to steal stone angels from a graveyard to try and scare the sleeping club chairman on the coach home, and he also walked into the bar of a hotel that the Reading team was staying at, carrying a live swan that he had found. Reading were battling for promotion, and after scoring a late winner in one game, Friday was pictured kissing a police officer behind a goal in celebration. Friday finished this season with 18 goals, winning the Reading Player of the Year award. Friday continued to impress the next season, despite being arrested for being drunk and disorderly, and scored a goal that lives in legend. In a game against Tranmere Rovers, Friday, around 30 yards out, leapt up 
and controlled the ball with his chest. He then turned around and volleyed it towards goal. The ball flew into the top corner and the crowd was stunned. Referee Clive Thomas put his hands to his head in amazement and asked Friday how he was only playing in the fourth tier. To which Friday responded, You should come here more often. I score goals like that every week. Clive Thomas later went on to say that he had refereed at World Cups and had seen the likes of Pele, Cruyff and Best, but that goal was the greatest that he had witnessed. Reading would win 5-0, a crucial victory in their chase for promotion. Reading would end up sealing promotion to a third tier, thanks in large part to Friday's 21 league goals. However, when the Reading players were offered new deals upon promotion, many, including Friday, were upset with what they had been offered, considering it a disservice. Friday struggled to recapture his form next season, having issues of asthma, and as the season went on, Friday would regularly miss training. Friday would ultimately be put on the transfer list as he requested, with Charlie Hurley now aware of Friday's drug use. He would ultimately join Cardiff City in 1977. Upon arriving in Cardiff, Friday was immediately arrested for fair dodging. On his debut, against a Fulham side containing Bobby Moore, he scored twice. However, Friday's habits kicked in again, as he often went AWOL and would not be seen or heard from between games. Friday begged to return to Reading, but to no avail. He would often return to London, avoiding train fares by walking into toilets, shouting, tickets please, before stealing the tickets and using them for himself. Following a confrontation in the game with a goalkeeper, Friday went on to score against him and showed the V sign in celebration. Cardiff narrowly avoided relegation, whilst Reading, without Friday, dropped back down. Friday missed the start of the next season after being arrested for impersonating a police officer. Upon his return, he kicked Brighton defender Mark Lawrenson in the face, and after being sent off, he went into a dressing room and defecated in Lawrenson's bag. Cardiff boss Jimmy Andrews expressed that he was fed up of Friday following this, and the forward was transfer listed. Going through a second divorce, Friday was tired of having his life dictated, and marched into the Cardiff manager's office to announce he was retiring from football at the age of 25. Following his retirement, Friday returned to working in asphalt, but Reading manager Maurice Evans tried to get Friday to re-sign for Reading. Friday responded by saying, I'm half your age and I've lived twice your life. He trained with Brentford, but soon put his foot down and ruled out a return to football. His life remained troubled, with further experiences of divorce, drug use, and he was again arrested for impersonating a police officer. Eventually, Friday's life in the fast lane caught up with him. On the 22nd of December 1990, Robin Friday was found dead in his Acton flat after suffering a heart attack, suspected by many to be the result of a heroin overdose. Robin Friday was 38 years old. It may be impossible to find clips of Friday playing, but the sheer amount of brilliant and bizarre tales in his life have enshrined him in legend. He is described by many as the greatest player we never saw. His wonderful play, his desire to win, and unforgettable moments saw him voted as Reading's greatest ever player. It is a tragedy Friday is not around today to retell the tales of his life, but having lived so many lifetimes in one, Robin Friday proved that the candle that burns twice as bright burns only half as long. <laughs>